Okay, the next thing I want to look at with this linear power supply is what happens right when we switch it on. There's a big current that flows, getting everything started up. That's called surge current. The conditions that happen, capacitors discharged all the way, the output is zero. Uh, to capture this transient, I'm going to trigger on the rising edge of the output, which is channel two, and I'm going to turn the scope to normal mode, which it's usually in auto mode. This allows me to only update the display at a trigger event and not keep going. Uh, we use normal mode, auto mode, depending on what we're doing. At the moment of switch on, and it'll take me a couple tries, I want to catch the rising edge of VS. Uh, VS is the secondary, and that will turn on diode number one, that top diode, and charge up the capacitor through diode one. This is the equivalent circuit that's going on. I'm going to ignore the 4 ohm resistor over here because as we'll see that current is uh, really small compared to the capacitor charging current. Let's take a look at this then we'll do some math uh, afterwards but I'd rather do some fun stuff first. Okay, so my trigger is set up, edge of source two, I know you can't see it, and it's the rising edge, and here we go, it says it's waiting for a trigger. If I go over here to trigger mode, I see it's set to normal. My two options are auto and normal. Really what auto does is it waits for a trigger, and if the scope gets tired of waiting for a trigger event, because one hasn't happened, it will just go ahead and trigger anyway. And this is where we get the waveforms that jiggle around because uh, the scope is just triggering when it wants to and not at a defined trigger event. So here we go. I'm going to flip on the power supply. Let's see if we can capture a startup transient. Oh, that's not too bad. We'll try a couple other ones. Not bad. You might hear a grunt from the transformer. One. No. I know what I'm looking for. There it is. All right. So, transformer secondary comes up. Uh, the green line, the output is following with it. At this point, diode one turns off, and you see it drops really quickly. We have this really fast transient. It's about a megahertz. Uh, I measured it earlier. And this whole effect that's going on at this corner is. Uh, uh, what's it called? Name escape me for the moment. It's uh, when there's excess charges in the PN junction of this diode. These are silicon diodes. And it's called uh, reverse recovery time. There it is. It's really interesting, but not, uh, not right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the slope of this. If I know the slope of V, let me go back to my little bit of capacitor theory. If I know dv, the slope of the voltage across the capacitor, the current through it is c dv dt. So the oscilloscope has all that information. Turn on my cursors. I have my delta x set to one millisecond so I can divide in my head because I'm a little lazy. And here we go. So we're going up and down. I see 6.9 volts, 6.8 volts as a change. So we'll say, I'll go for the biggest one. Uh, 6.9 is about it. All right, so 6.9 delta V over delta T or dV dt, 6,900 volts per second. It sounds like a lot, but in electronics, that's actually really slow. It means you're measuring a 60 hertz waveform. All right, so we'll do some calculations. Uh, let's see, 49.5 millifarads from the last one. Uh, 6.9 volts, 6.9 volts. Let me do a calculator here. Six point nine volts. Six point nine divided one millisecond. Oh my goodness. Three hundred three forty-two and because of my units, 
this is an amps oh my goodness 342 amps is going through poor diode one and this capacitor at that moment or when you measured that slope this diode has to survive that in a data sheet we have a parameter called surge current The diodes for this is the 6A10, and the surge current is rated at 400 amps. Well, remember there is eight of these diodes in parallel in our device, so this is uh, okay. And even it's uh, okay if it's just one diode charging up this capacitor, which would be bad. But according to the data sheet. At room temperature, these diodes aren't at room temperature. We're good.